The 2022 budget of economic growth and sustainability has a projected capital expenditure of 5.35 trillion naira, a non-debt recurrent spending of 6.8 trillion naira, and debt servicing projected to cost 3.61 trillion naira. With crude oil averaging $67 a barrel this year, the oil price benchmark for 2022 has been set at $57 per barrel, with an oil production estimate of 1.88 million barrels per day. The budget proposal is based on an exchange rate of 410 naira, 15 kobo, to the dollar, and projected GDP growth of 4.2%, while the inflation rate is 13%. But there is a proposed budget deficit of 6.2%. To six trillion naira. We plan to finance the deficit mainly by new borrowings totaling 5.01 trillion naira, 90.73 billion naira for privatization proceeds. President Buhari sought to allay fears over Niger's growing debt. Some have expressed concern over our result to borrow and to finance our fiscal gaps. They are right to be concerned. However, we believe that the debt level of the federal government is still within sustainable limits, borrowing at specific strategic projects and can be verified publicly. But a sustainability consultant would like the government to look inwards in funding the budget deficit. Currently, MDAs, as well as international oil companies and all the very important organizations across the country, they've, ref they've refused to remit certain funds within their disposal to the federal government. And we know that this fund runs into trillion of Naira. So I think if the president can actually focus on getting these MDAs and IOCs and other relevant organizations to do the remittance they need to do in respect to their taxes and other obligations to the federal government, maybe we'll just be able to generate just a of money to be able to shove the issue of borrowing to the ground. With the early presentation of the 2022 appropriation bill and all things being equal, Nigeria could well be on track for a budget cycle of 12 calendar months from January to December. Messi Bokbo for Plus TV Africa. Um, just a quick report there by Messi Ebukpo of Plus TV Africa. And now we're going to be speaking with uh, Femi Egbeshola, the president. Association of Small Business Owners of Nigeria. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Three points. Mr. Agbashola, can you hear us? Yes, good morning and thanks for having me. Great to have you on The Breakfast this morning. And um, I'm going to start with asking, you know, your you know, basic thoughts on um, uh, the president's um, uh, budget uh, uh, yesterday. 16.39 trillion naira. Um, there have been people who have screamed, you know, at th those figures, um, seeing where we're coming from. In two, the year 2000, our budget wasn't, you know, more up to 700 billion naira. We've moved from there to, you know, asking for about 16.39 trillion naira in 2022. So let me, first of all, get your thoughts from yesterday's um, uh, address of, to the Joint Session of the National Assembly. Well, the increase in the budgets to 16.39 trillion. It is an indication that um, government is going to have more money to pump into different ministry agencies and prior status. And that will also mean more development for the country, as it may be. And um, that's what we need for now. Uh, the inflation rate is so high that we need so much fund to be able to tackle inflation and bring back the economy to what it used to be. But the challenge there now is um, how do we fund this? Do we have that kind of fund, can we actually generate the expected revenue that has been proposed? What must we continue to borrow to support our budgets? That's the concern. Uh, naturally, one would have expected that the budget should be based on the national revenue rather than going ahead to fund it from uh, borrowed money overseas. And um, it means that the government also needs to begin to look inward and see how they can work more on local national revenue generation such that our budget be based on what we can have and not we can borrow from. Well, um, it also shows that there's a problem with the system, with the economy, because um, if you are spending more than what you can generate, it means there are leakages somewhere 
it means there are certain challenges somewhere, and it means that there is need for us to increase our productivity. That being said, the government needs to be more innovative in generating revenue such that um, our budget will be dependent on what we can raise, and this budget will be prudently spent on uh, the proposals. For example, in Nigeria today, we have a lot of um, policy pronouncements, but the implementation has always been a challenge. The question is, the last year's, this year's budget 2021, how has the implementation rate been? What are the reviews of this year's budget to show the challenges we have had, what uh, areas we have deviated from the proposals that was uh, made in last year, and how can we correct it? These are the things we need to look at. Okay, so I'm going to go next to, you know, one of the things that you mentioned, and that is budget implementation. We don't have enough of that conversation. Um, we also have an Auditor General who doesn't really do justice, you know, with helping to explain to Nigerians, and of course the Presidency, to explain that to Nigerians how well we've used uh, the funds that were budgeted and those that were borrowed and, and whatnot. Um, it's always easy when the president puts out those speeches saying, you know, you can see that roads were built, you can see trains were built, this and that, you know, but there's no proper detail as to uh, how proper the, you know, budget was implemented. So, so sh let's get your thoughts on that one. Um, does that Very, just make us seem to be moving blindly um, and continue borrowing? Uh, it seems more like that. I think the government of the day needs to be more proactive about um, implementation and reviews. We need to have a stronger economic team and we also need to have perhaps a, a, another team that monitors the implementation of the budget so that such that um, we are uh, in tandem with what we are expected to do with taxpayers' money. Um, and, and given that we can also have challenges at times, like this particular year, last year, uh, we know that uh, the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, actually disrupted the budgets to a very large extent. But uh, be that as it may, we should at all time continue to focus on the implementation of what we have. And uh, this time, I think more funds should go into sustaining the economy and growing the economy instead of uh, servicing recurrence. And that has always been another challenge with our budgets over time. We need to be focused on growing the in industries in the country such that they can be more productive and we can get more revenue from them. We need not to focus more on oil as we have always done. Like in this budget also, the focus is more on oil. We are expecting more, most of the revenue to come from the oil sector, which to me is not uh, in tandem with uh, the realities of, of today's world. We need to focus more on growing the SMEs. We need to focus more on growing skill acquisitions so that we can have more job opportunities in the country. We need to focus more on the health sector so that most of our funds will not be going overseas in the name of going for treatment overseas and that Naira will become threatened the more. We need to focus more on developing our raw materials. We have a lot of raw materials, raw minerals in the country that are unexplored and can give us a lot of revenues if government actually focus more than they are doing at the moment on this. We also need to focus on education. We cannot really get much without uh, actually paying more attention on education. Education has always been one of the bedrock of any economy. If we are fully budgeting enough into the education sector, you will discover that there are going to be more innovation and we'll be with innovative ideas, we'll be able to create a better economy for ourselves that will no longer be dependent on getting funds from overseas and we'll be able to also reduce our imports. The import into this country has been challenging and, and has been threatening our Naira. And as long as it continues to do that, uh, inflation will continue to rise. And government will always, always need more money to fight inflation by increasing their budgets year by year. And that's not the way to go. So for us to be able to tackle inflation effectively and efficiently, we need to make sure that um, Nigerians are bring to understand that local made products and services is the way to go. We must encourage the production and patronage of locally made products and services. And this has to start with government itself. Government needs to begin to see how they can patronize the locally made products and services the more and be less dependent on uh, uh, the imported ones. Granted that we have quite a number of um, prohibited, prohibited uh, product lists by CBN, but we need to go beyond that. One thing is to have some products 
being uh, prohibited. Another thing is to enforce the prohibition. Today, we have the foreign rice all around us. It's part of the prohibited list. And many other products and even food items that are prohibited but are still in our market. What are they doing there? Who is enforcing these policies such that our product to be in a place where it should be and not uh, the other way around, whereby uh, saboteurs will begin to disrupt um, the efficiency and effectiveness of the policy proposal and the implementation of the public policy in the end of the day. Yeah. Um, Ms. Ibrish, a lot. These things, um, I'm sure that, you know, we could have had the same conversation in 2015 or in 2016 or 2017. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Because we've had, you know, similar, you know, of these discussions and these plans. And, um, you know, I'm sure experts have continued to say these things over the years. How much we need to focus on development, focus on industries, focus on science and, and technology, um, education, healthcare, basic infrastructure. Some of all these things that really would help the Nigerian economy grow. But every year we see that there's an increment in the budget proposal. And that means that these things aren't working. Um, and so we need to continue to set, uh, uh, source for more money. So I'm going to come back to that, you know, and get your views on how well we've done in that regard. But I want you to share your views uh, concerning those who are complaining that we are borrowing too much. We currently have a six, more than six trillion naira deficit. We very likely will be borrowing about five trillion naira plus. Um, do you have similar worries with former President Olusha Gwambasanjo and other experts who have said that this is really just leading us, you know, to a very, very terrible, uh, you know, situation if we continue borrowing? Yes, an average Nigerian should be bothered about our borrowing because it is going to have a direct negative influence on all of us at the end of the day. Uh, no individual, no business, no country would want to borrow to finance is our like expenditure. That is not right. And nobody would want to agree with that. I, for one, continue to wonder why we should keep borrowing and borrowing and borrowing without working on how to increase our revenue. Granted, we have a reason to borrow for once, but it should not be a, a custom that you have to borrow again and again and again. If you continue to spend more than what you can generate, it means there's going to be a problem and eventually there will be a collapse. And the government needs to understand that um, they need to learn from the other economies. We have bigger economies that are having more population than Nigeria, that has several other challenges, but they are not borrowing. They have learned to live according to their means and also become innovative in generating revenue. And that's the way to go. It's a lot of concern. We wonder what will happen next year again, because the borrowing of this year will always be more than that of the other year. Yes. And it's not good for the economic health. It means that the government also needs to check their economic team. I think it's right time for us to begin to look at how to encourage government to put more experts in the economy to see or steer the direction where the economy is going. We cannot continue to live on borrowing. It's like a blood. When blood is leaking from your system and it is not blocked on time, death is imminent. And that's exactly what we foresee with this economy. It's an uncomfortable situation. I don't think there's, you know, you know, lack of experts you know, in the country. Uh, there's person like, persons like you, there's, you know, lots of people who understand the economy uh, to perfection. Uh, but unfortunately, the persons in government don't seem to agree with, you know, your narrative or the narrative of, you know, some of these experts. And so, you know, not, you know, I, I know you're not speaking for the government, but why do you think that they understand it different? Because the Minister of Finance, you know, has made statements yesterday saying that we will continue to borrow uh, to keep the country gr uh, growing. So w where do you think their own narrative comes from? Well, I think that there's a lot of difference between uh, sitting on a table and forming a policy and being on the streets. Many of the economists that are on the streets that are romancing with the public what day by day are not, unfortunately, in the government committee, economic committees or team. Yeah. We, that is why some of us are clamoring that um, uh, stakeholders need to be brought to forth be part of an economic team of the government. Um, uh, the so-called technocrats alone or government officials alone cannot sit in the office and think that all is well. All is not well. Uh, they don't really understand the, the happenings in the streets this time. It is very, very difficult for an average man to live and even have three square meals a day. And that's the challenge. And that is why we have 
increase in crime and vices everywhere, but it's really kidnapping. Name it. Everywhere it's about crimes and, and vices because it, everybody must survive and when they cannot get the good means of survival, they look the other way around. And why do they find it difficult to survive? Because the economy is so harsh, the inflation rate is the highest at any point in time in our history and that's not good for us. If I were the president, I think it is high time I look into my economic team and perhaps make some critical changes to be able to affect the, re the realities of the economies of today. We need not continue to borrow. We must be able to look inward. If organizations, companies in and around Nigeria are still weathering the storm, COVID-19 or not, and they are still making profits, declaring profits, why will a country be declaring deficits? That's not right. And I do not agree with the team that we must continue to borrow and borrow with the numerous potentials that this country has and the human capital too that we have that can unnest these potentials to bring in even more than the double of the revenue that is being projected at this point. Great time to remind Nigerians that elections have consequences. Um, and it might take eight years, you know, for, you know, every person to feel the effect of, you know, those consequences. Um, Very Mr. Great. <laughs> Mr. Very now, great. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I now want us to talk about the um, value of the Naira, you know, and what this, you know, continuous borrowing, um, you know, the effect that mm -hmm. it will have. You know, the CBN governor has continued to do all he can to help, you know, the, the exchange rates somehow, some way become more reasonable. Um, but these plans, you know, are, are not, you know, working very well. And so, you know, is borrowing, as briefly as you can, is borrowing also one of the reasons why we'll continue to see the Naira's value depreciate? Of course, it also contributes directly to the, the, the depreciation of the Naira. Because when you continue to borrow to sustain your expenditure, you will continue to live big. And when you continue to live big, it is being at the detriment of the Naira because every other person, to every other institution too, we believe there is money to spend. And they don't, they don't now look inward, they look at the money that is available, money that is ready to share from state to state, from local government to local government. And everybody seems to be comfortable Why the reality is the difference. And that means that um, it is time now for government to see how they can strengthen the Naira, not just by relying on the policies of CBA, which has not been working as it should be over time, but facing the realities, the, the, the physical realities of the streets. We need to look at how to strengthen our economy, how to strengthen the small and medium enterprise sector, how to strengthen the industries, how to strengthen our youth to be more productive, such that we'll be able to have, have more jobs created, we would have more, have more enterprise coming up, and the existing enterprises will be able to grow faster and bigger than they, they used to be. We become less dependent on imports, and this will eventually bring back our Naira to its lost glory. If we reduce our imports to, to the barest minimum, or naturally and ordinarily, Price, the, the dollar will begin to fall and Naira will continue to rise. But if we continue to rely on policies on the table, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say we will continue to have a long way to go. What has this policy said taken with us to? For the past three, four, five years, Naira has continued to enjoy a free fall. And that means that something is wrong with those policies if you are not actually getting the desired result. And that means we need to do something different to get a different result at this time. We cannot continue to See, don't look like some people will say the budget is a uh, proposed on a on four or a ten naira to a dollar, but the reality is that the market in the open market is not even four or ten naira, meaning that um, we have even gotten it wrong from the beginning. And the only way to get it right is to be less dependent on imports and more uh, encouraging more of exports so that we can strengthen our naira the more. Yeah, is the current um, oil price any form of comfort? Uh, because we, we have an oil price benchmark of uh, 57, but of course, uh, uh, oil price is currently you know, around 80 and maybe even climbing. Well, yes, uh, the, the, the benchmark uh, for this proposal is 57 dollars per barrel, right? Um, but um, the real market price is more and above that. I love that, that the uh, the government has been very conservative with uh, their proposal this time. That is good. But some of us have lost confidence in uh, 
in, in, in the sales of crude oil to sustain our budgets. Some of us don't believe again that we must continue to rely on how much a barrel of oil is sold before economy can run. We, we have gone past that. The, the, the world is even looking at um, finding alternative means of, of a source of energy rather than oil, meaning that at a point in time, there will be less and less demand for oil. Where would that place our country if we continue to put our primary reliance on oil and how much a barrel of oil is sold? And it shows that uh, we are still not looking inward enough. So um, we believe that uh, the, the, the price, first price of $57 per barrel should be realistic all things being equal, because it is conservative enough, but at the same time, we need to look more beyond just the selling crude oil to maintain uh, uh, our economy. Uh, for example, government is looking at um, getting more more oil wells, because our oils are actually drying up, but is that the way to go? Do we really need to continue to pump our money into discovering and exploring oil wells? I think that's not the way to go. The government needs to focus on uh, the non-oil uh, non products, uh, domestic products, and see how they can um, encourage these uh, domestic products to grow rather than more focus, more attention on our sales of crude oil and its exploration. Femi Egbeshola, you are President, Association of Small Business Owners of Nigeria. Um, and I'm going to, you know, bring you in, you know, with that. Um, you earlier spoke about, you know, how we haven't done well enough with investing in, in numerous other sectors. Um, how important that we need to focus on other sectors like, you know, the um, agriculture sector, um, industries, science and technology, small businesses, SMEs across the country, education, healthcare, and all of that. Um, so I, I want you to share your, your views on um, how you think, you know, that better investment in small businesses will be able to help Nigeria. And, and also, you know, look at the way that the current government has also positioned itself. Um, people have said that they have continued to, you know, to stifle businesses. Earlier th uh, this morning, we spoke about how electricity price has uh, also been hiked secretly without a lot of, without Nigerians knowing. Um, so do you think that the current government, even if they continue to say that, you know, they, they always have these great speeches that they make, um, but do you think that they've done well enough with regards opening up the space for small businesses to thrive um, in Nigeria? Well, uh, the end result should be a determinant, a determinant that should answer that question. And the end result is, is the SME space growing? Are we having more enterprise? The enterprises that are existing, are they growing? Are they transforming from micro to small, from small to medium, from medium to large enterprise? The answer is no. And why is this? Because the economic realities is so harsh and is not conducive for growth. And what makes it so hard? Because uh, a lot of infrastructure deficits is in the country. And it becomes very, very difficult for startups, for small, medium enterprises to grow. We have a situation whereby instead of recording growth, we are recording uh, debt. Many uh, companies now, many, many small businesses uh, at either a point of debt are, are already dead. What's the reason for this? Government will give the support of perhaps 10 cents and creates a situation that will take about 30 percent out of them. Granted, government has done a lot of intervention this uh, recent times, quite a number of intervention. But the question is, how many uh, benefited from this intervention? According to the Smithland report, we have about 47 million entrepreneurs in the country at the moment, and I'm sure that is far more than that. In the realities of today show that we have more than even 50, 60 million entrepreneurs. This intervention, how many of these entrepreneurs benefited from it? Can it even get up to one, two million entrepreneurs? If it gets to one million, what's the percentage of one million compared to for seven million? That means a lot still needs to be done. There's a lot of gap that needs to be covered, that needs to be filled if we really want entrepreneurs or small, small medium businesses to grow in this country. The, but virtually all the sectors are healing. Look at the agricultural sector. We have a lot of food wasting away while we continue to import products that are made from uh, exported food here. While our own raw and raw food are wasting away. Government needs to bridge that link. Government needs to encourage agriculture. They've done so much on agriculture, but they still need to do more. They need to create access roads from the rural areas to the cities to the town, such that this uh, raw, uh, uh, farm produce can move efficiently to the cities 
where it will be bought and consumed. Government needs to also support the real farmers. You will discover that many of these incentives are going to political farmers and not the real farmers. And that's why the real farmers are still doing it the local, crude way that they are working. Government needs to have been able to lift them from that um, uh, crude method of farming to mechanized farming that is the order of today that will increase productivity. Why would we continue to buy beans that we can plant here as much as 100,000 naira per bag? That, 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 that's silly. And it means that something is wrong somewhere. Why would we plant our rice here, harvest it, and before we can sell it, we have to rebag it, put a bag with a tag name in Thailand? It means something is wrong. Yes, something is wrong. So, our government has done a little, but they need to do more. And the only way they, need, they can actually do more is to engage stakeholders, like I said the other time. They cannot sit in the office and know where the true pitch is on the streets. They need to involve people who are actually stakeholders, who knows the nitty-gritty of what is happening to the economy and to the business, and bring them on board to also bring out their suggestions that will at the end of the day, be part of the policy that government will come out with and also support them in the implementation of these policies. That's the only way we can get it right. The education sector is another, another, another bad, bad, bad sector that we can talk about. Uh, our schools are in shambles. Look at the average public primary school, secondary schools. You will discover that uh, those students coming out of there must have been geniuses to be able to come out with good grades. Look at our, uh, our, our graduates. What is the quality of education they've been able to receive? And, and many of them are unemployable because the quality of education is becoming low and falling every day. We will we, we, we continue to talk on and on and on. But for me, the paramount one, because I belong to the business sector, is for government this time to pay more attention on developing the SME space. Why do we need to do this? Because the jobs are no longer there. These jobs are no longer there for our, our graduates and our Nigerian youths. The only way we can have jobs now is to grow the enterprise space so that those entrepreneurs can employ more people and other youth can also can embrace entrepreneurship and come to employ others. Job, the government actually has no job creating jobs. It is the duty of the entrepreneurs to create jobs. And they can only create jobs if the environment is enabling. Well, you know, an enabling environment is, is it, it, it cannot be overemphasized how important it is. Um, and that includes also the challenges that we've had with security, um, the challenges we've also had with um, electricity, you know, and, and basically, you know, these little you know, new laws here and there that stifle businesses. Um, that's why you also see a lot of young people moving on to social media, you know, to be their medium of, um, of, uh, of trade because they can't afford to do business, you know, the, the regular way. Um, Ms. Agbeshola, quickly also, because we, we're going to wrap up in a bit, share your views on, um, you know, your views on revenue over time and how important it is that we should somehow, some way, be able to improve on Nigeria's revenue. Um, we are going to be looking for five trillion naira to borrow. We currently cannot find six trillion naira to you know to you know complete our budget. It means that Nigeria is not making enough money. Um, do you think that the Minister of Finance and the Nigerian government currently understands the need for us to improve on the revenue as a country um, in order to stop borrowing? Well, to like I did say, results are actually generated from what you can see, not just on paperwork. Uh, the realities of uh, we can see, every, every one of us can see, shows that um, they are not cutting it really right. And um, I wonder if they realize that. And it would be too bad if they don't realize this. And perhaps that may be one of the reasons why we are still where we are today. Uh, we, we need to change our ways of doing things so that we can get a different result. We cannot just continue this way. The, the, the economy is collapsing every day, but we have many ways to raise revenue. Many people are not in the tax nets. In fact, those people paying tax are far less than those who are in the tax nets. But how do you bring somebody in the tax net who has not been able to eat three square meal a day? So for you to be able to actually bring people to the tax net, Government also must also show that they are responsible. People must see, the citizens must see, that government is actually working to improve their welfare and their well-being. When that is not done, it will be difficult to bring them to the tax next. Uh, imagine, 
just this week, the price of diesel has gone up, the price of uh, electricity has gone up, so many other prices have gone up, dollar is rising. What does that mean? It means that the products and services will also have a higher price tag. And when they have a higher high price tag, who is going to consume these things? It still boils down to the issue of the citizens. The citizens are the consumers. Do they have that purchasing power to buy these products again? Even if they must buy at all because they are necessities, they have to reduce their buying because their purchasing power has reduced. When you have an economy like that, it is difficult for government to actually enforce tax uh, on its citizens. But that's the way to go. Every same client gets their money primarily from tax and other innovative ideas. So government should continue to think of how to improve on infrastructure, on our health system, on our education, on youth development, on industrializing the country, so that such that they will have more people to tax and more money or more revenue will come from taxation. Another oh. area that remains untapped to today is this issue of relying, processing, and adding value to our products from agriculture to raw materials to look at the main products. We need to add value to them. We have countries still today uh, getting our cassava that is still being exported either by, by crude or, or other way around, and they're being brought here in the name of process tax and the rest, and we are still buying it. But if you continue to do that, you have nowhere to go. Nigerians too need to change their mindset. But as much as government has their own challenges, we also need to change our mindset. We cannot continue to export our job opportunities to export our future to other countries at the detriment of our youth, of our coming generation. We need to change our mindset to imbibe and embrace made in Nigerian goods and products and services so that we can also grow our economy. If the government does not get it right, we are the one that suffers it the most, not those government officials. So we also need to begin to see how we ourselves can contribute to the economy. How we ourselves, from the little money we are getting, can see a certain form of taxes to government to improve the economy. How we ourselves can use our, that power that we have to vote to change a bad government to a good government. Not because we are being given some stipend during the election period, and for that reason, we vote who happens to be the highest bidder. That should not be the case this time. We need to be looking in more and see how we can better the lot of ourselves by ourselves. Nigeria is for us, and we are the only one that can make it better. If a bad government is there, it is only going to be there for a period of four or maximum of eight years. Our destiny is in our hands. We need to work on improving our lot. It starts from our own community ourselves. Can we see how we can gather ourselves and improve our community? Must God, we wait endlessly for government to come and do everything for us? If we improve our community, the economic situation of our community will also improve. We'll be able to do more enterprise and we'll have money to do other things and even pay tax and support our young ones that are in our area such that they will not embrace crime. That's the Absolutely. way to go. So it's an uh, all inclusive thing if we must get it right. Absolutely. And final question uh, for this morning. Uh, can President Muhammad Buhari genuinely be seeking debt forgiveness, um, as he mentioned a few weeks ago, uh, while he continues to borrow? I did, I did not get that right. Uh, I'm asking, can the president continue to you know, mention debt forgiveness while he continues to borrow? <laughs> there are two opposite things. There are two opposite things. You, if, uh, if, uh, let's bring it down to a common man's understanding. If uh, you borrow money from me, you are telling me to uh, forgive you and cancel your debts, and you are coming back to borrow the more, it means that uh, you have not gotten it right. You will forgive somebody who is repentant and who is ready to change his way of life, his thought of doing things. So if you are begging for forgiveness and you are still borrowing, it means you are not, you are not changed your way of doing things. And that forgiveness will also encourage you to even borrow the more. So naturally, forgiving or even borrowing the more is not the way to go. The way to go is if we must go for forgiveness, go for debt cancellation, uh, we need to also stop borrowing. That will show to the forgiver that actually this country, this government has actually changed their way of doing things and are ready now to um, work on getting things done the right way. And that's what we need to do at this time. We just must be self-dependent as a nation. We must be self-dependent as, 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 as a sovereign state, individual states of the country. We must be self-dependent as a local government. We must be self-dependent as even individuals. That's the way to go. And government is the, at the forefront. They need to 
to, to, to walk by example so that we also can follow their example in making all ourselves self-dependent. Government should please and please and please work on erasing the idea of borrowing to support our budgets, our existence, our sovereignty. All right, um, Femi Beshola, I truly enjoyed uh, this conversation. Thank you very much for uh, joining us and spending time with us on The Breakfast this morning. We wish you a very Thank beautiful you for, weekend ahead. Thank you much, so much too for the opportunity. It's a privilege. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, stay with us. Uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, uh, we're moving to the southeast to talk about the possibility and the idea of a state of emergency in Anambra State as we move closer to the elections on the 6th of November. Stay with us here on The Breakfast.